Okay, you're asking, who is Robert P. Fitton? I am he. I reside on Cape Cod, so I guess um, author, Cape Cod author, Robert P. Fitton. I was brought up in Northeastern on the South Shore of Massachusetts. Two things stand out pertaining to writing when I was a kid, and they're not substantial at all. However, now I can see that they're related to it. I was forever imitating teachers, characters, public figures, not as a mimic, but just purely imitating. And I use that in my audiobooks today. Secondly, and this is strange all these years later, when we received our weekly spelling list, all the kids would be gathered around and they'd be going over trying to memorize the words. What I would be doing, just subconsciously, not even knowing I'm doing, I was putting the words together into a story and to see if I could challenge myself by going in order and making a story out of what I was seeing there, which I usually did. Spelling grades weren't that great, but that's okay. And uh, that's, that's the two things I remember that really relate to anything I'm doing now. My major at UMass Amherst was uh, connecting spelling words. No, no, it was uh, American studies with emphasis on American history and politics. Although I sprinkled in courses with the Native American mythology, American literature, and then the heresy course, science fiction, science fiction. And at this time in my life, the wild oats behind me, I buckled down and graduated cum laude. I loved what I was studying with the professors who were both instructive and inspiring. They were very good professors. It was in the course studying the myths of the American Indians that I was assigned to write a narrative, a narrative about the Native American and the mythology surrounding him. I wrote a story now called The Legends of the Seasons as told by the old man. Two things happened. The story uh, bedazzled the professor big whoop. Today I see the shortcomings of that story. It's not that bad. And secondly, I knew I could make up stories. Listen, if you're really serious about writing, writing is never a hobby. A hobby is a joke when compared to creating stories. Writing has a much higher meaning. It beckons you. It beckons you. It captivates you to a level you're drawn into creation. And if writing doesn't hold that type of mantra for you, then you just don't understand. I had pent up creative energy after I graduated, but writing the first draft of The Apex of Power, a Star Trek novel, opened the door as Rod Serling said of imagination and having the support of people around me really helped. Thank you. Propelled me forward into another universe, a universe of meaning, a matrix of interacting characters, and I commenced this ascent into the other world on a Smith Corona portable typewriter, white out and Xerox paper not included. And from the caverns of Manhattan came a long distance call from Bantam Books. Good things were being said about the apex of power. In my early 20s, I had snapped food and agent, and we paraded around the streets of New York City. I wore a three-piece suit and showboated my briefcase containing my novel. Seeing Tommy John pitch at the old Yankee Stadium would probably be a better legacy for the New York City romp. Sometimes it's not easy making the transition back to the real world of working and life. The apex of power is a freebie on my site. Again, it's impossible to stop being creative when you're consumed by creativity. But the novels just kept on coming. Again, with a lot of affirmation and I'd send them down to my agent in New York. I'm frequently inside my head, AKA asleep at the switch. And I never questioned what that agent was and wasn't doing with my works. I figured my output would get better and I was accumulating a portfolio of something I could use once one of them hit with the publishers. I liked my career in outside sales because I worked with an immense slew of characters, many of whom have made it into my books and I liked the competition. By the time I had written five books and a number of short stories, I was working in sunny Southern California, but missing New England. Sometimes things really do change on a dime. Not good. Experiences shape the psyche and sometimes change really hurts. I didn't write anything for over a year. It was like a fighter 
having lost badly, gradually working his way back into condition. But that fighter, upon his way back, learns new techniques and reinvents himself. Then I was reluctantly prompt, thank you for doing so. I began over time taking seminars, courses, and lectures from big deal writers, producers, and screenwriters. When the number one science fiction writer in the country at the time told me after reading my work, you really know how to write, yikes. And again, thank you for saying that. I held onto my agent way too long and finally jettisoned him only when he said he was involved in Broadway now and clearly hadn't given proper attention to my work. At this time, I wanted to control the sale of my work, owning the copyrights and point of sale. Concurrently, personal computers had just captured the world. And again, reluctantly, I shifted from a typewriter to a PC and a laptop. I began to utilize the web and sold books as Palm Pilot files in the US and points around the globe. Later, I invested in companies that were eager to promise great things on the web, but soon, Everything went apart. You can figure out the rest. Forget the money grubbers. By this time, I had developed a strong but thoughtful voice, many times humorous and buttressed by a direct style. My time travel novels reflected my history background and sense of adventure. My writing, according to one reviewer, alluded to a Hitchcockian flavor, like North by Northwest, or Bogey and Bacall. Remember, my first effort was a Star Trek novel. To say that I was enamored by Star Trek in the 1960s doesn't capture how that influenced my writing. So did Serling in The Twilight Zone. Not that I used to write Twilight Zone or Star Trek episodes. I think you have to hit the sweet spot of what a book or TV series is all about, and then it becomes part of the universe you're writing in. Yes, my crazy sense of humor comes through, especially in the Matthias Jones books. Murder, mayhem, and monkey business. I decided to keep my website and sell paperback books from my universe. This worked, but with the arrival of Amazon's program, which brought in marketing, promotion, and publishing, both in paperback and Kindle, and then a third option, audio books, I decided to take that route. As a teenager, you might spot me in Northeastern Massachusetts with a portable tape recorder, recording events, or even making parodies and pretend interviews. In college, I would sometimes summarize and record my notes for exams. My vacations and travels are all taped from this time period. Now, with my books, I would read the drafts that I had written to see how it sounded. And then I would make corrections to improve the work. I was using my voice for the individual characters. Hi, my name is Bucky Driscoll. I'm a professional security officer in Hamilton College in Hamilton, New Hampshire. Yes, more and more, more and more, which I kept on cassette at the time. With edits, I had a rudimentary audio book. When I purchased a professional voice recorder, everything changed again as it had with the personal computer. Edits were much easier and under control. Special effects were seamless. I began selling audiobooks along with my paperbacks and Kindle in multiple markets. My website has quality books and audiobooks, not like a lot of the trash you see around their web. I did my voices privately over the years, to the annoyance of some, I'm sure. Now I can take my characters and emphasize them in my audiobooks. Harlan Ellison said, to truly get the best quality, the audio must be recorded by the author himself. That's Harlan speaking, and I don't think Harlan went to the fit and extreme like I do in some of my books. There are a great many audiobook readers better than I, but they don't have the perspective I do about my own work. Ellison is right on these counts. So what are you waiting for? If you need more audio samples, email me and I'll get them to you. These books are really good. Thank you very much. Have a great day and a wonderful evening.